Hello everyone, welcome to Abdev channel. In today's video, we will try to understand what is the JWT based authorization technique and how it is useful to secure your microservices that are developed using the Spring Boot. Okay. So in order to understand what is JWT based authorization technique, let us understand how the authorization working in the traditional uh, e-commerce based web applications or for that matter in any web application. Okay. Say for example, uh, there is a, an e-commerce application. Customers will uh, go through different pages like profile page, order history page or uh, delivery addresses page, whatever it is the page, right? Those pages will be showing the user specific information. So in order to show the user specific information from the server to the client, server has to know what is the user ID. So server will be, whenever the users are trying to access the user specific pages, information pages, server will be serving the sign in form to those users. So they have to provide the username and password. Once they provided that username and password server, uh, will try to fetch the user specific details and serve the profile details or the order history page or the payment details pages to those users. So upon, once the user is successfully authenticated with the server, server is not going to ask uh, furthermore the sign in details, the username and password. Because how is that working even though the protocol that is used between the client and server is the HTTP which is a stateless protocol. So the username and password that were given in the first step of the transaction, how they are being remembered between the server and client across the transactions. That is because uh, whenever the server is authenticating the user by the given username and password, it is going to create a session ID for that user and it is going to maintain the session ID and the session, session specific user data in a temporary cache, okay? And it is going to provide that session ID to the client and client whenever he wants any other uh, request or any other user specific data like profile or order history, client has to send that session ID to the server. So server will pick up that session ID from the uh, from the request and go and check that session storage or the uh, cache storage where we have stored, where the server has stored the session ID and the user data in a temporary cache. If it finds there, then it serves the response, the user specific profile data or the user specific order history data. If it is not there, then it will be, it will be sending error messages or the session expired messages or again the sign in form to the user. This is how the authorization is working based on the session ID in the traditional web applications, right? Suppose if this is one of the node on which your application and there are three different nodes your application is running, okay? Suppose the login request came to one of the node and that particular node has created a session entries in a, in a storage, in a cache storage. Suppose the upon successful authentication, the second request went to the second other node, but not to the node where the session ID is created. Okay, this went to the some other node. So how the second node will also be able to access the session session details or the session ID or the user ID from the cache storage? because it has to be accessible. It has to be a common point of contact for all of your nodes. Okay, so it should be shared across all of your nodes on which, on which your application is running. Then only the session details created on one of the node will be accessible to all other nodes on which the application is running. So this is basically highly dependent on this particular database for authorization, on this particular cache storage for authorization technique. So if this goes down, your whole uh, authorization mechanism of the authorization design will fail. So this is a single point of uh, failure. So in order to avoid this problem, what are the different alternatives? Uh, instead of sending the reference to my user data, what are the different alternatives that can be given from server to client and can be exchanged between client and server upon 
further subsequent requests. So the one of the alternative technique is instead of giving the reference session ID or the reference token, let us give the data itself to the user or to the client and ask the client send the data up for every subsequent request so that server will authorize the requests right so uh, that is what the uh, jwt means okay J what is jwt means jwt means json based json web token okay what is json here we will try to know in the next part of the video but instead of giving the reference token we have to provide the value object or the value token itself directly to the client and client has to send that value token so that server extracts that user data and authorizes the request so this is another way of making or using the stateless http protocol for authorizing the request without maintaining any cache storage at the server side okay so instead of giving plain user details in response to successful authentication how about encrypting that data and giving it to the client and client has to send that encrypted data to the server for the subsequent requests so this encrypted data is called as json web token so json web token is encrypted user information shared to clients upon successful authentication and clients will send it to server in subsequent requests so the server decrypts it and authorizes the requests okay so that is what the json web token is so basically the json web token is used to authorize requests between two parties uh, if at all that can be the client server communication the in order to authorize the request between the in the client server communication then we have to use the json web token based authorization technique okay so what is this uh, json web token how to what is the structure of this json web token how are we going to authorize the requests okay how we can generate the json web token how it can be used to authorize the requests all those things we will see it in the next video that's all for today thank you for watching please give it a like share and subscribe to my channel thank you